This is the Very Easy, a marvel of aviation that slices through the sky with the grace of a falcon and the precision of a master marksman. Born from the genius mind of Bert Rutan, its sleek, canard design revolutionized personal aircraft, turning the dreams of high-speed, efficient travel into breathtaking reality. This story begins on the edge of the Mojave Desert, where ambition meets innovation under the relentless sun. Here, amidst the dust and the dreams of flight enthusiasts, the Very Easy took its first leap into the heavens, challenging the conventions of aerodynamics and engineering. This is the Very Easy, an icon of the skies that redefined the very essence of personal aviation. In 1976, Bert Rutan transformed the whole approach to the traditional design and construction of home-built aircraft. When he launched his venture into the world of aviation with the Very Easy, an electrifying chapter in home-built aircraft history was penned. Propelled by a dynamic 100-horsepower engine, the Very Easy, when constructed to Rutan's exacting blueprints, transformed into a marvel of engineering capable of ferrying two adults across the skies for an impressive 1,127 kilometers, 700 miles, at speeds touching 290 kilometers per hour, 180 miles per hour. With a minimalist load, absent a co-pilot and with just an hour's worth of fuel, the Very Easy demonstrated its prowess by ascending at a breathtaking rate of 608 meters, 2,000 feet per minute, soaring to heady altitudes of approximately 7,600 meters, 25,000 feet. Beyond its remarkable performance, the Very Easy boasted features that captivated a wide audience eager to construct their own aircraft. Its appearance was nothing short of extraordinary, a leap from the conventional, Yet its mechanical complexity remained surprisingly simple and traditional, save for its airframe configuration and structural makeup. This simplicity meant that even hobbyists with modest mechanical aptitude could assemble a very easy swiftly and affordably, setting it apart from other more costly and complicated home-built aircraft designs. Its operational economy in flight and maintenance further sweetened the deal. By the close of 1979, Rutan's groundbreaking venture had seen the sale of 4,500 plan sets, marking a monumental success in the arena of home-built aviation. Rutan's adoption of the canard configuration was not just a visual spectacle, it served a functional purpose far exceeding mere aesthetics. In canard, the control and trim surfaces are positioned ahead of the primary lift-generating wings. Bert Rutan highlighted that this design choice offered superior benefits compared to traditional aircraft designs. It enabled the creation of airplanes that were resistant to the kind of aggressive stalling that leads to loss of control, enhancing overall flight safety. Specifically, in the Very Easy, this canard layout facilitated the use of shorter control linkages, contributing to the aircraft's improved safety and handling characteristics. The initial Very Easies, including the two prototypes and those constructed from Rutan's plans, eschewed traditional ailerons on the rear wing. Instead, Rutan chose to incorporate elevons solely on the canard. Elevons serve a dual purpose, acting as elevators to adjust the aircraft's pitch and as ailerons to manage its role. Merging two control functions into a single surface, this choice streamlined the Very Easy's design making it simpler and more straightforward to construct. Rutan embarked on his exploration and experimentation with Canard aircraft designs back in 1963. By the following year, he was concluding his junior year at California Polytechnic University in San Luis Obispo. He had constructed and piloted a radio-controlled model Canard aircraft. His academic journey continued, culminating in a master's degree in aeronautical engineering. The genesis of Rutan's venture into piloted canard aircraft was the very Vigan, which he began constructing in 1968. This entirely wooden aircraft took to the skies for its inaugural flight in April 1972. The design of Rutan's very Vigan notably mirrors that of the Saab J-37 Vigan, a Swedish military jet fighter that made its first public appearance in 1965 and served as an inspiration for Rutan's own canard aircraft creation. Reflecting on his aspirations, Rutan later shared his desire for a personal aircraft that emulated the essence of a modern fighter jet, akin to the F-104 or the F-4. He envisioned a robust machine equipped with a significant control stick, a plethora of buttons, and a swift rate of roll, 
a true macho machine that would encapsulate the thrill of piloting a Century Series fighter. In the latter part of 1974, Rutan shifted his focus to the development of the Very Easy. Prior to this, he had discontinued work on a different project derived from the Very Vegan, known as the Mini Vegan. This project was envisioned as an all-aluminium canard aircraft featuring a high wing, with a horizontal stabilizer and elevator positioned at the low front end. However, after conducting tests with models in a wind tunnel and on a car equipped with measuring instruments, Rutan concluded that the Mini Vegan design was inherently unstable and not feasible due to its high cost, excessive weight, and the complexities involved in modifying it for various experimental purposes. Redirecting his efforts, Rutan then decided to concentrate on crafting a canard aircraft using foam and fiberglass materials. Before embarking on the construction of the prototype Very Easy, designated November 7 Echo Zulu, Rutan dedicated numerous hours to meticulously examining the surface finishes and construction intricacies of high-performance European sailplanes. These sailplanes were crafted by technicians who shaped foam and then encapsulated it with fiberglass and adhesive a sophisticated composite construction technique. In an ironic twist, Rutan opted for a simpler and more cost-effective version of this composite method for building the initial Very Easy. This choice was strategic, as it enabled rapid modifications to the aircraft's design. Rutan could effortlessly reposition wings or control surfaces to explore different aerodynamic setups. Such flexibility was pivotal allowing for swift testing of various configurations without the cumbersome process of extensively modifying a metal structure, which would have significantly decelerated the development. It was only after the prototype had successfully taken to the skies that Rutan decided to commercialize the Very Easy as an aircraft constructed from foam and fiberglass composites. Rutan enhanced the canard configuration of his aircraft by incorporating winglets at the tips of both wings, a technology pioneered by Richard Whitcomb, an aerodynamics expert at NASA during the 1950s. These winglets were designed to reduce drag, thereby improving both the climb rate and cruise speed of the aircraft. On the Very Easy, Rutan ingeniously utilized these winglets to serve a dual purpose, also acting as vertical stabilizers and rudders for yaw control. Keen to push the limits of the canard layout, Rutan used the November 7 Echo Zulu as a testbed to explore its performance potential further. He believed that by setting new world speed records for aircraft in the Very Easy's weight category, under 500 kilograms or 1,102 pounds, he could redefine his canard design. This would not only demonstrate the superior performance capabilities of a well-designed canard aircraft over traditional aircraft designs, but also validate his innovative approach. After nearly four months of dedicated effort by Rutan, his wife Caroline, and a group of friends, the first Very Easy was completed. Its maiden flight took place in May 1975, powered by a Volkswagen engine that had been adapted for aviation use. Just three months after its inaugural flight, the Very Easy was showcased at the annual Experimental Aircraft Association Convention and Fly-In in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, in August 1975. This event marked the beginning of what Don and Julia Downey have termed the Rutan Revolution, signalling a transformative period in experimental aviation sparked by Rutan's innovative design. The overwhelming success of the Very Easy at Oshkosh prompted Bert Rutan to immediately start designing a version of the Very Easy tailored for home builders. He and his team undertook the construction of the second Very Easy, November 4 Echo Zulu, during the winter of 1975. While November 4 Echo Zulu might look identical to November 7 Echo Zulu at first glance, Rutan significantly modified the design to accommodate a more robust and dependable Continental A75 engine. This necessitated changes in virtually every aspect of the aircraft's dimensions. For instance, the wing area was expanded from 5.3 square meters, 59 square feet, to 6 square meters, 67 square feet. Moreover, Rutan revised the canard design and chose a new airfoil for this wing, developed by aerodynamics experts at the University of Glasgow to further optimize performance. Rutan and his team initiated the construction of this aircraft in December 1974, and it achieved its first flight in March 1976. During the build, Rutan faced challenges in sourcing the intended A75 engine and instead opted for the Continental 0200 engine. 
this engine was approximately 13.5 kilograms, 30 pounds, heavier than the A75, leading Rutan to compensate by adding an additional 4.5 kilograms, 10 pounds of ballast to the aircraft's nose for balance. Rutan started to distribute plans for the aircraft in July 1976, and remarkably, the first home-built Very Easies began flying by March of the following year. This rapid transition from plans to a functional, high-performance aircraft was unprecedented at the time. The efficiency in construction was largely due to Rutan's innovative use of composite materials. To create the aircraft's lightweight yet durable fiberglass foam fiberglass sandwich structure, builders employed a hot wire cutter for precise shaping of the foam core. This core was then enveloped with epoxy resin and precisely cut fiberglass cloth a method that ensured the aircraft's structural integrity while minimizing its weight. As home builders took to the skies with their very easies, they encountered immediate challenges related to the aircraft's weight and control. In April 1978, Rutan conducted a survey among the builders and found that the completed aircraft were on average 14 to 23 kilograms, 30 to 50 pounds heavier than the specifications had indicated. This deviation was largely due to some builders straying from Rutan's core concept of a straightforward, light aircraft designed for daytime and fair weather operation. Instead, they installed extensive instrument packages for night and adverse weather flying, necessitating more elaborate and heavier electrical systems. As a result, some of the very easies were so overweight that carrying a passenger became a safety concern. The control issue posed a significant and urgent problem, requiring immediate and rigorous effort to resolve. Building the aft wing with the precise incidence and twist was critical, yet several builders experienced difficulty in achieving a level flight without applying full roll input, indicating overpowering of the canard's elevons due to inaccuracies in wing incidence and twist. To address this, Rutan opted to redesign the rear wing to include ailerons while maintaining the elevator control on the canard. This monumental task was completed in roughly two weeks, and the modifications were swiftly distributed to the builders in need of solutions. Despite encountering challenges with weight and control, the very easy soared in popularity, with Rutan eventually selling around 3,000 plant sets. By 1980, 200 very easies had taken to the skies. However, in 1985, Rutan made the decision to cease the scale of plans for all Rutan-designed aircraft. This decision came as Rutan embarked on a new venture with scaled composites, finding that the demands of managing businesses were becoming too burdensome. Although he stopped selling new plans, the Rutan aircraft factory continued supporting builders who were already in the process of constructing their aircraft at the time of this decision. The November 4 Echo Zulu aircraft itself has a storied history accumulating 700 flying hours. In a notable journey, Doug Shane piloted it from Rutan's workshop at Mojave Airport in California to Washington, D.C., where it was handed over to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in 1986. This aircraft not only marked advancements in private aviation, but also played a role in safety research. In the late 1970s, NASA initiated studies to enhance civil aviation safety, particularly focusing on reducing stall slash spin incidents, a leading cause of aviation fatalities at the time. The Very Easy, known for its resistance to spins, caught NASA's interest, leading to return being flown to Langley Field, Virginia in 1977. Following this, a team of NASA aerodynamics experts visited Rutan's Mojave workshop to conduct extensive tests on November 4 Echo Zulu. Their findings were compelling enough to persuade NASA to construct two very easies for further flight testing and wind tunnel research. Additionally, Rutan utilized November 4 Echo Zulu in the early 1980s for experiments on how rain and heavy moisture affected the laminar flow properties of the aircraft's main wing and canard. This research was prompted by reports from builders about unexpected changes in pitch trim when flying their very easies and other Rutan Canard aircraft in bad weather, highlighting the Rutan's continuous efforts to redefine and understand the nuances of its designs under various conditions. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more, and ring that notification bell to stay updated on our latest posts. Thank you for your support.